the IV note six, guys. Here we go. Uh, the IVT stands for what? Wow, how'd you guys know that? That's great. Oh wow, what man? <laughs> Let the record show that Alvarez is drinking a diet Coke with a lot of caffeine on it. Okay. I'm kidding. That's, all right. Now diet Coke has a lot more caffeine than regular Coke. All right. You ready, Gian? All right, so this says what two limits, so I have a function here, consider the function g of x, and it's a piecewise, so answer the question below. What two limits must equal for g of x to be continuous at x equals negative 2? So what two limits must be equal, Ms. Guillen? Okay, and if I use the left-hand side, what expression do I use? Oh, that's fabulousness. And that better equal what? Of what expression? That's right. So the left hand side must equal the right hand side. So that y value must equal. And then for letter B, it says what two limits must equal for g of x to be continuous at x equals 3? Again, where is 3? Well, the left hand side, as I approach 3 from the left hand side, I'm using this middle expression. And that side better equal the right hand side as I approach 3 from the right hand side. Man, am I saying right hand side correctly? Uh, for that limit. So I'm going to write limit as x approaches 3 from the left hand side. If I approach from the left, I use the expression 4x plus 1. And that better equal limit as x approaches 3 from the right hand side. And if I'm approaching 3 from the right hand side, it is kx minus m. Are we okay? Nothing crazy, right? Or have I done something crazy? No, nothing crazy. Letter C, determine the value of m and k so that the function is continuous everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out just so I can see. So I know if I approach negative 2 from the right-hand side, I know that's a, a specific y value. So I'm going to write limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right-hand side of 4x plus 1. I know that that equals 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. So I better... So this guy, if I approach from the left-hand side, that better equal negative 7. So I'm going to write limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left-hand side of, what was the kx squared plus m? kx squared plus m is going to equal, notice I'm not going to write the word limit anymore, k times negative 2 squared plus m, and that better equal negative 7. Am I still okay, guys? I'm going to have one unknown. Well, actually, two unknown, because I don't know what k and m is, is currently. So I'm going to write it like this. 4k plus m equals negative 7. I'm going to call that equation 1, and I'm just going to write it somewhere. I'm going to leave it alone. Job, why? Because notice that I'm going to have a system right here. I'm going to approach 3. So I'm going to change colors, and I'm going to go like this. I'm going to approach 3 from the left-hand side. So I'm going to go limit as x approaches 3 from the left-hand side of 4x plus 1 is equal to 4 times 3 plus 1. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1 is 13. Yes. So I'm going to approach now 3 from the right-hand side, and I'm going to go limit as x approaches 3 from the right hand side and what was that kx minus m kx minus m is equal to k times 3 minus m which equals 3k minus m and I better equal that to what 13 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now here comes your algebra I'm done with calculus here comes your algebra. The algebra is what's going to slow us down, not the calculus. I need to solve for k and m. I can do whatever method I want. Let's see. I think I'm going to use this formula. I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put equation 1. You can do a lot of things, but I'm going to put equation 1 here. So I'm going to write 4k plus m equals negative 7. 
And I'm going to put equation 2 down here. 3k minus m equals 13. I don't see any errors. I think I'm okay. I'm going to add them. And when I add them, the m's are going to cancel out. Do you guys see that? This is from your, system, from your algebra 2 days. So when I add them, these m's cancel out. And then, let's see, 4k plus 3k, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7k, and then negative 7 plus 13, 6. So now to get k by itself, all i got to do is divide by. So k equals 6 sevenths. I do not see any errors at the moment. Let me know if you guys do. It does not matter which one you use now. I can use equation 1 or equation 2. It does not matter. You should get the same answer. Let's use equation 1. And then we'll use equation 2 to see if we get the same answer. So I'm going to write 4 times 6, 7 plus m equals negative 7. So let's see. 4 times 6, 6, 12, 24. So I'm going to have 24 over 7 plus m equals negative 7. I'm going to move this to the right. So m equals negative 7 minus 24 over 7 so m equals I'm, I'm obviously if i have a calculator I just type it in right negative 49 over 7 minus 24 over 7 so finally m equals 49 59 69 and then for 73 negative 73 over 7 if i didn't make any mistakes you should get the same answer if you would have used the other equation. So let's test it. Uh, am I running out of space? I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write it over here. So if I if if I used number two. So if I used equation two, then I would have had this. Let's see. Where are you? Three times. Was it six sevenths? Six sevenths minus m equals 13. I'm going to switch the 13 and the m like so. And there it is. m equals 3 times 6, 6, 12, 18. So 18 over 7 minus 13. You guys see what I did there? And then 13 times 7. Oh man, let's see. 77 and then another 7. 7, 6, 9, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. What is it? 91. Okay. 18 over 7 minus 91 over 7. 91 minus 18, 91, 81, 71, 72, 73. Negative 73 over 7. OMG, it's the same value. Are you shocked? No, you're not shocked. Do you see how, how we got the same answer no matter what, guys? So the algebra is what's going to slow us down, not the calculus. Are we cool? Are we ice cold? What's cooler than being cool? Okay, I'll stop. Oh, do you guys actually know that song? Yeah. Yeah, who sings it? Yeah, I'm impressed. I'm surprised you guys know. Did you know? I don't think I know. It goes, hey, uh, Oh, yeah. Hey, uh. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I think this one is, is it from UH Quiz Continuity 1? Have you seen it? Have you guys taken it? All right, so look what it is. So hopefully now we'll get your 100 here. Given that f of x equals this, define the function f of x at 5 so that it becomes continuous at 5. So at the moment, you can't do direct substitution. Notice that x does not equal 5 because it's not part of your domain. You can't divide by 0. So Check to see if it has a limit. You okay, Guillen? Limit as x approaches 5 of square root of x plus 4 minus 3 over x minus 5. If this has a limit, that means I have, uh, obviously you're not defined at x equals 5, but if I have a limit, that means I have a removable discontinuity, a hole. So all I got to do to plug that hole in is just fill in the pixel. So here's how you do it. Chop, how do you fill in the pixel? Let me show you piecewise functions, right? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. Square root of x plus 4 plus 3 over square root of x plus 4 plus 3. So the top kind of acts like the 
difference of squares, the a minus b times a plus b. Square root times square root, the square roots go away. So I'm going to write limit because you still haven't evaluated the limit. So keep writing the word limit until you evaluate it. x plus 4. And then negative 3 times the positive 3. That is negative 9 all over. And do not distribute the bottom. Leave it like so. Because then it will look nasty. And then I do 4 minus 9. What is that? Yep. So now I have x minus 5 in the top. And OMG, look, I have that x minus 5 factor in the bottom. Square root of x plus 4 minus 3. What factor, and I'll slow down because I can see you guys writing. <laughs> what factors cancel out? x minus 5. Bam, bam. Now can I do direct substitution? Remember that this is still in the denominator. So 1 over, I plug in a 5. What's 5 plus 4? And what's the square root of 9? Uh-oh, hold on. Oh, that should have been a plus. No wonder. I wrote minus. I was already freaking out. That's a plus there, guys. That plus is that one. Uh, okay, what's 3 plus 3? There you go. My YouTube fans were probably screaming. Sorry, guys. I'll make sure to put a note a posted. Okay, 1, 6. There it is. Yes, ask. Um, well, I combine like terms. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So that's where my negative 5 is at. You know, no, that's a good question, miss. Ask, 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 ask. Yes, I did direct substitution. You see this 5? I plugged it in there. Okay, I still haven't even answered the question. So what do I got to make? For this to be continuous, like this, f of 5 equals 1, 6, and that will make it continuous. So, by the way, I guess technically I should be writing this. f of x equals, and I should be doing something called the piecewise function, and I should be writing square root of x plus 4 minus 3 over x minus 5, as long as x does not equal 5, because that's where you're not defined there, right? And, but if x does equal 5, how do, what do I do? I just put a what? A 1, 6. If x equals 5, just put a 1, 6, and it, and it covers that hole. Yay or nay? There it is, guys. Yay. We did it. Huh? Yeah. Cool, right? Or you don't think it's cool? All right. This theorem looks this theorem looks hard. It's actually really simple. So let's read it, see what it says. Intermediate value theorem for continuous functions. A function y equals f of x that is continuous on a closed interval a to b takes on every value between f of a and f of b. In other words, if y not is between f of a and f of b, then y not equals f of c for some c on a b. Alright, you guys got it? <laughs> It really is not that bad. If you if you read it carefully, uh, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. All right, let's explain what it means. You guys ready? So this is what it means. I have a graph. You know what? Let me do it. Uh, I'll do an even easier one. I have a graph. I'm exaggerating quadrant one and quadrant four. Here's A. Here's B. And I'm going to say that I start here. And I'm going to say that it's continuous. Shh. It can look however I want it to look. I just did a continuous graph that crosses the x-axis. All right. Now pretend you didn't know the, the way the graph looked. If I told you that f of a is negative, here's how you say negative, you say less than zero, and I told you that f of b is positive. Now pretend, obviously, okay, I'm, I'm going to slow down. Okay. I know you can see the graph. Pretend you cannot see the graph. If I tell you you're continuous, so I told you you're continuous, right? And I told you that f of a is negative and that f of b is positive, and you're continuous between a and b, did I cross the x axis? Yes. How many times did I cross? Well, if you look at this graph, I crossed one. You cannot tell how many times you crossed unless you know how the graph looks. But you know you crossed it once. Sure, but how? Well, f of a was negative, f of b was positive. The only way you go from negative to positive is if you cross the x-axis. How many times do you cross it? I don't know. 
If I draw a graph like this, I crossed it once. If I draw a graph with a lot of wiggles, maybe two, three times. Does that make sense? All right, so how does this apply in real life? Well, look, check it out. I put an example here. You're driving to a calculus Saturday session for your first mock exam. Sorry, guys. Which happens to be your favorite class because you already know you're going to pass the AP exam. Well, which is true. You guys are going to get 100%. Uh, yay, go Cardinals, math life. You look down at your speedometer. It says 55 miles per hour. So you're driving, and you look down at the speedometer. Everyone's been in a car before, right? Okay. When you look at the speedometer, it said 55 miles per hour. Did you at any given moment go exactly 52 miles per hour? Yes, you had to. There's No, it's a must. It's a fact. You, you went at some moment. Yeah. At some moment in time, you hit 52 miles an hour. It's not possible to go from 0 to 55 without hitting 52. Not possible. Now, if someone asks you, remember, you, you looked at the odometer and it said 55. If someone asks you, did you go 60 miles an hour? That one could be probably, maybe, because we don't know. Like, we don't know if we reached higher than, like, we know, all you know, when you looked at the odometer, you were 55. The only way to get to 55 is to get through all the other numbers. Did you hit 60? Maybe. But is it guaranteed? No. That's what the intermediate value theorem is. It's just a way to say you guarantee something. Oh, you, you, know, you look down and it was 55, you hit 50 miles an hour somewhere, guaranteed. That's all it means. Cool or not cool? Cool. All right, look at this next one, guys. So this next one says, can the IVT be used to show that there is a solution for the equation that f of x equals 0 on the interval 1 to 2? These are x values. These are x values. If f of x equals that expression, give an explanation. Okay, so here we go, guys. I'm going to go slow. Yes, you can easily plot this graph and see if it crosses the x-axis, but let's not do that. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to find what f of 1 is. You're going to see if it's positive or negative. So f of 1, 3 times 1 cubed minus 5 times 1 squared plus 1 minus 3. I don't know what that is. Let's see. 3 minus 5 plus 1 minus 3. 3 minus 5 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So that's negative 4. If I didn't make a mistake, negative 2, negative 1, negative 4. Okay, now here we go. I'm going to do the next one. I'm going to write f of 2. f of 2 equals 3 times 2 cubed minus 5 times 2 squared plus 2 minus 3. Let's see if we can do that. 3 times, what is 2 to the third power? 8 minus 5 times 2 squared is 4 plus 2 minus 3. Okay, now we're rolling. Here we go. 8 times 3. 8, 16, 24. And then 5 times 4 is 20. And then the plus 2 minus 3, I'm just going to go ahead and say minus 1. I'm just going to combine them already. All right, let's see. 24 minus 20, that is, tw that is uh, 4. When I subtract 1, that is 3. Okay, you know, you know f of x is continuous. So here's what I'm going to write. Since f of x is continuous on interval 1, 2. Make sure to put bracket. This is what they were talking about in the college algebra course that you guys were, you were in. Uh, bracket means included, right? But you guys already know that. All right. Comma. And since f of 1 is negative and f of 2 is positive, comma, f of x equals 0 somewhere on this interval. At least once. And I could have written it better, but that's fine for now. Did that make sense, guys? Espinosa, does that make sense? How did you know it's continuous? Oh, well, it's a function. Because it's a function, <coughs> I know it's continuous. Oh, okay. As soon as I tell you it's a function, it's continuous. If it's like this, it's a polynomial. Oh, okay. Okay. If it's a polynomial, it's always going to be continuous. You know what I mean? Thank you, miss. I mean, do you have, like, a application? application for who? 
you're in love with it. Oh, I do, but uh, uh, I have to print it. Okay. So sorry, Miss. So anybody after school, I can print it out real quick for you guys. Okay. How do we feel? Are we happy? I don't know why I said it like that. Sorry, Lavelle. Don't judge me. I can feel you judging me. You're like, like she's judging me. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. All right, check it out. It was well, there. It was a new law. It's no longer a new law. It's been like two years now. Uh, but I, I really love this one, guys. It's a true story. I can't. I can never pronounce this. Atchafalaya Basin Bridge. Atchafalaya. Okay. Atchafalaya. Atchafalaya. Okay. So check it out. Check that. This is, this is a cool one. There's a new law. Well, it's not new anymore. So there is a law that goes into effect this August. It already went to effect. It went into effect like two years ago. In Atchafalaya, did I say that right? Basin Bridge. Okay. True story, guys. Tell your parents about this one. The bridge is 18 miles long and it's part of I-10. Okay, whatever. Uh, you got it. Tell your parents about this. Check it out. The new law allows use of cameras to support issuing a ticket based on how fast it takes a vehicle to get from one end of the bridge to the other. Drivers who cross the bridge in less than 18 minutes would receive a speeding ticket in the mail. In Atchafalaya Basin Bridge. So imagine that it's a bridge. There's a camera here. They know it's 18 miles. There's a camera here. So it takes a time stamp, bam, you pass here, and then when you exit, it takes another time stamp, bam. And if you if you are faster than 18 minutes, it can issue you a ticket. Then it's gonna issue a ticket to everyone. So let's let's think about it. So what's going on here that they can do this? So if you travel 18 miles in 18 minutes. How fast? What's the speed limit, or what? No, miles per hour. Sixty miles per hour. <laughs> yeah, if you're going, because you're tra yeah, it's sixty miles an hour. Does everyone know how we calculated that? So if you finish faster, if you pass this bridge, this is your IDT at work. If you pass this bridge in less than eighteen minutes, they give you a ticket. So here's what, now I'm not telling you to cheat the system, but let me tell you something. So if, and I think this applies to all toll roads. Not that all toll roads will give you a ticket, but I've always thought about this, so that's why I always make sure to stop on toll roads. If you are taking a toll road, there's cameras everywhere, right? So when you enter the toll road, like they, they catch your little Texas stamp or whatever. Oh, Dude. Yeah. I, no, no, don't, don't purge the camera. Don't whatever. Stay, make a stop somewhere. Stop at the gas station for some candy then for a fact you will be below like you know what i mean like it's gonna you're gonna be on the convenience store for two three minutes that will make your average miles per hour decrease so if you are because i i think you're always at jeopardy to get a ticket you're on the toll road boop and then you pass another toll boop it can find the, the your average speed you'll find your average speed now whether or not they give you a ticket it's up to uh, you know the, the whatever authority is in charge but I've always thought of this, and I've always thought, you know what? I'll just make, because I am a speedster, I'll just make sure to stop at, at a gas station and buy some hot Cheetos. So if you ever travel to New York and you pass all these toll roads, just tell your parents, got mom, dad, you're going to be speeding. Stop at a gas station just in case. We don't want to get a speeding ticket on the mail. Because I think it's possible that they wanted to, they can. Because they have when you enter and they have when you exit. What is the speed limit? 60 miles per hour. Yes. Oh, yeah. How, would you, how did you calculate it, Flores? All right, let's see. Okay, velocity is distance divided by time. 
right? So I know that I have 18 miles, and I do this in 18 minutes. So right now, if I just go 18 miles divided by 18 minutes, I'm going to get one mile per minute. Correct? But I don't want miles per minute. I want miles per hour. So you can do dimensional analysis, and so you can just go, well, in, one, in 60 minutes, there's one hour. And then see your miles, can, or actually the miles, you don't want to cancel out the miles. You just want to cancel out the minutes. And now you have miles per hour. So 1 times 60, 60 miles per hour. Okay. Good question. Let's keep asking. All right. So uh, we kind of already explained letter B, guys. Use intermediate value theorem to explain why this law is fair and just for all drivers. Why? Well, intermediate value theorem, when you're in a car, the, the, the motion of time is continuous. You just don't skip time. Like, time is always continuous. So that's why it's just for everyone. If that car passes that bridge in less than 18 minutes, you are speeding. You're going faster than 60 miles an hour. And if, you're, if, if, if it takes 18 minutes or longer for your car to pass this bridge, it, which is 18 miles, then you were definitely going slower than 60 miles per hour. So YVT is definitely can be used here. Does that make sense, guys? Cool, right? Okay, uh, let's continue. And then I think I have more questions for you guys from quiz three and four. Uh, I don't think I've set quiz four free yet, uh, but we'll set it free and no, don't worry. You don't have to do it before the exam. That one, you can have it uh, done next week. Quiz four is IVT and continuity too. So it's this motion of IVT. Uh, do it before the exam or by the exam date, by Thursday. I mean, technically, we wanted it uh, today, I think, or tomorrow. Yeah, one of the two days. I can never remember. All right. But don't be mad, Missy. You said that really angry. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said today, and she's like, you wanted it tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Good energy only here, guys. Bam. Okay. Sorry. Right. Oh. Good energy only. You okay, Guerrero? You okay? Yeah, you need to go to the nurse, go for it. All right, here we go. Given the value of a and b for the function f of x to be continuous at both x equals 1 and x equals 6. So they want you to give you the value of a and b to make this continuous. So this is just like the last problem that we did. So in order for that to happen, I need this to equal this at x equals 1. Does that make sense? Right? I need the left-hand side limit as x approaches 1 to equal the left hand, the right-hand side limit as x approaches 1. Okay, perfect. So here we go. A times 1 minus B equals 15 times 1. So I need A minus B to equal 15. I'm going to call that equation 1. Are we still okay? Okay, next. At 6, I need 15 times 6 to equal... I need the, the, as I approach 6 on the left-hand side, I need it to equal as I approach 6 on the right-hand side. So I need these two that I'm going to do in different color. I need these two to be equal at 6. Cool or not cool? So here we go. 15 times 6 better equal 6 squared times B, or I guess I should write B first. B times 6 squared minus A. So what's 15 times 6? 15, 30, 60, 70, 80, 90. Is it 90? 90 equals 36B minus A. That's equation 2. Are we still okay? All right, so now let's see. What would I do? Well, there's many things we can do. We can do the same thing we did last time, but this time I want just because I want to do a different technique, just because I want you to see all these different techniques. So look at this equation right here, equation 1. I'm going to move the B around, and I'm going to say that A equals 15 minus B. Do you guys see that? Oh, plus B. When I move the minus, it turns to a positive. We're okay with that? No one's crazy, right? I'm going to put that in for this A right there. So 90 equals 36B minus parenthesis 15 plus B. Distribute the negative. 90 equals 36B minus 15 minus B. Combining like terms, 90 equals 35B minus 15. And I'll slow down. Yeah, 36 minus 1. And then I'm going to move the 15 to the other side. 
So 90 plus 15, 91, 105. 105 equals 35B. And then if I divide both sides by 35, B equals 30, 16, 90. I think it's 3. Yep, 5, 10, 15. I have to go in pieces in my head. Now that I know that B is 3, can I figure out A? Yes, plug it in directly into that one, guys. So A equals, what's 15 plus 3? 18. How do you feel? I forget that all because she's having a uh, tough time. Sorry, that I don't. I hope you feel better, though. I'm going to pray for you. Okay. Here we go. This question kind of doesn't feel like calculus at all, guys. It's part of that UH quiz four, but it doesn't really feel like calculus, but it is, it is a skill that comes in handy, uh, especially when we're doing uh, analysis, like first derivative test, second derivative test. I shouldn't even be throwing that word around because we haven't done any of that, so pretend I didn't say that. Uh, so here's how we're gonna solve it, guys. I am going to find where this expression equals zero, because what this means is I want the left side to always be positive or bigger than, if, if I want the left side to be bigger than zero, that means I want the left side to be positive. Does that make sense? Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is get my numbers that equal zero. So where does this expression equal zero? Where does this expression, so you can have good notes here, equal zero? Well, it equals zero if x equals five, see? Where else? Well, what value for x? Four times what is 28? So x equals 7. Those are my values where this expression will be 0. Does that make sense? So then I do something called a railroad tracks. Don't call it that at the university. But for now, we can call it railroad tracks. 5, 7. Because it kind of resembles a railroad track. See? The little hashtag marks or little tick marks. OK. Here we go. I'm going to go slow. Relax. All you got to do is evaluate that 5 to the left and to the right. How do you do that? Pick any number. What's the easiest number for you to the left of 5? 4, 1, I would say 0. It does not matter. Any number to the left of 5. So let's plug it in. If I plug in a 0 in there, 0 minus 5 is negative 5. But when I square it, it turns to a positive. And if I plug in a 0 in here, 4 times 0 is 0. 28 minus 0, is that a positive or a negative? Positive. What is positive times a positive? So I put a plus symbol like that. Now I'm going to choose a number between 5 and 7. Give me any number between 5 and 7. Okay, 6. 6 minus 5, is that a positive or a negative? Positive. Well, I'm squaring it, so maybe I should have just looked at that. I'm squaring it, it doesn't matter, it's going to be positive anyways. 4 times 6, what is that? Is 28 minus 24 positive or negative? So what's positive times a positive? So put a plus symbol. Give me a number larger than 7. 8. If I, uh, eight, It could be 10. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. 8 minus 5. Did I say 8? Yeah. 8 minus 5 is positive, but I'm squaring it. It's going to be positive anyways. 8 times 4. What's that? 32. 28 minus 32. Positive or negative? Negative. What is positive times a negative? So put a minus. So here we go. Ready? Where is this greater than zero? Well, it's greater than zero from negative infinity all the way until I hit five and then put a parenthesis, not a bracket, because we don't want it to equal five. And then union from five all the way again until seven. And everything has parentheses because you cannot include them because it does not have an equal sign. Yay or nay? Well, how do we feel? Do we feel okay? All right, so here we go. Here's another one. Chop, but this one's a, a fraction, a rational. I don't know if I can do this one. Yes, you can. Get all the numbers that make this function either zero or undefined. So I'm going to write find x values that make this expression zero or undefined. 
All right. What makes it zero if x equals what? No, not two. Two times two is four. That that's the undefined one. The two. The the, the two. Uh, x x equals what for zero? Five. So here's where I have a zero. So I'll put a zero in quotes. Two times five is ten. Ten minus ten is zero. Zero divided by anything is zero, right? All right. What makes it undefined? x equals 2 and x equals 8. I'm going to make a number line and this number line is going to have those numbers. 2, 5, 8. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, the 5, I got it from here. You see how it says 2x minus 10? The only way you can get a 0 is 0 divided by anything. So I did 2x minus 10 equals 0, 2x equals 10, x equals 5. That's how I got that guy. And then the 2 and 8, you just can't divide by 0. So that's what makes it undefined. You can't put a 2 in there. 2 minus 2 is 0. You can't divide by 0. x equals 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. You can't divide by 0. Here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose numbers. What's the easiest number to the left of 2? Any number. Zero. Two times zero is zero. All you care about is negative or positive. Two times zero is zero minus ten. That is negative. So put that in your head. That is negative. Zero minus two is negative. Zero minus eight is negative. What is negative times a positive? No, what, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it, is. it is. Sorry. Negative times a... But it's, I said negative times a positive, but these are negative times a negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. Sorry. Zero minus two is negative. Zero minus eight is negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. I have a negative in the numerator and a positive in the bottom. Negative divided by a positive is a? Negative. So put a negative symbol right there. Give me a number between 2 and 5. 3. All I'm doing is plugging into the x values, guys. And you don't care about the actual answer. You just care about positive or negative. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 10. What is that? Positive or negative? Four. Yeah, negative. So just put that in your brain. Negative in the numerator. All right. Uh, what number did we say? 3? Three? 3 minus 2 is a positive. 3 minus 8 is a negative. Positive times a negative? Negative. negative. What's negative divided by a negative? Positive. Put a plus symbol. Give me a number larger than 5. 6. 2 times 6? 12. 12 minus 10? 2, which is positive. Put that in your brain. Positive in the numerator. If you want to make a note, put somewhere in the note. In the bottom, I'm using 6. 6 minus 2? which is positive, 6 minus 8, positive times a negative, negative. So positive divided by a negative, negative, put a minus symbol. All right, give me a number bigger than 8, 10. 2 times 10 is 20, 20 minus 10, positive or negative? Positive, positive. so positive in the top. 10 minus 2, positive or negative? Positive. positive. 10 minus 8, positive or negative? Positive. positive. So I have positive in the top, positive in the bottom, the whole thing's going to be? Positive. All right. Yeah, I know that was a lot. Here's the answer, guys. It says that I want this expression to be less than zero. So if it wants, if I want it to be less than zero, that means that I want it to be negative. Correct? So where am I negative? Between negative infinity, all the way, you always read a graph left to right, all the way until you hit what? Two. Put a parenthesis, because you can include two. And then union, again, from where to where? 5, parenthesis, parenthesis, 5, comma, all the way to 8, close parenthesis. There it is. How do we feel, guys? Okay. All right. Uh, on delta, I put a review. And we will talk. We'll, I'll have a review for you guys tomorrow as well, a short one. And that is it, guys.